Hey, Fitzy here. Back out again with another one. I'm back at the 49 Chev, and the front of the quarter panel on the passenger side had a really bad patch job done to it. So I had to end up making a new patch for it using the old patch that was already in the car. I used recycled metal, old rusty metal, and I made it all with simple tools. Stick around. So I think it's time I get back at this one. You've probably seen this one in the background and seen I haven't been touching it. Uh, I've been waiting for the customer. He's been extremely busy, uh, businessman, and uh, I've been waiting for him to come up to look at the work that I had done. He was up here the weekend, uh, very pleased, told me to continue on. So that's what I'm doing here now, getting back on this one. Um, in the video on this one here, I made the back section. Uh, I did this quarter panel last. And made the wheel opening. Done all the work on that there. What I need to do now is repeat the same process over here. Uh, the first thing I did is I went and looked at the video that I done on the other side. And that's this video here. Uh, you want to go check that out. All I'm going to do and the reason why I looked at the video is that I want to repeat the same process uh, on this side as I did on the other side. You could probably try to reinvent the wheel and try to do it different, but what ends up happening when you do that, you end up with um, running into problems. And what ends up happening also is uh, it does look the same, okay? When you try to do things totally different than you do on the other side, it doesn't always look the same way. So I try to duplicate the same process as what I got done over there. I may have a better way to do this side. And say it'd be better if I did it this way, but the problem I got is that I will change everything and the left won't look like the right, or the right won't look like the left. But anyway, so the first thing I did on the other side is I turned around and uh, installed this section here. I pre made these, this piece here and this piece here. When I made the other side, I made duplicates of the ones that are over there, so I already had them and I had them put away. Uh, that's been mounted on the car's full quarter. When I take that off, there's nothing there, so let's get started. Now, first thing I got to do is I got to install this section here. I made this entire taillight section. Uh, if you're not familiar, this is a 49 Chev fleet line uh, that was brought to me. There was a bunch of custom work already done to it. You can see what's been done. All the shiny metal stuff. That's the stuff that I went and reworked. Okay, I have a bunch of other work that I got to do on this car. I got to redo this trunk lid. Uh, I got to do a bunch of nose work on it, door seams, all that type of stuff. But the first thing I got to do is build quarter panels for it and put fender skirts on it. So uh, I wanted to get the quarters and everything done on the car first. Starting from the back, working my way to the front of the car is what I'm going to do. Uh, I got this panel here that I bent up the last time I made the other side. And I got to get it to fit in here. The process I used is I actually had to shrink the bottom side of this here to try to get a bit of a turn on it. And then I stretched the middle of here and ran it through the English wheel. So I'm going to repeat the exact same process as I did on the other side on this one here, regardless if I think I can do it better way. Because the process came up with a certain look, and I want to come up with the exact same look. So I'm going to go ahead now, get this here all cleaned up, get it marked out, cut off. Uh, the front section piece goes up here. And uh, what I'll do then is I'll start uh, running this through the English wheel, shrinking it, and get it ready to install on there. Okay, I got the panel all stripped off. I got the paint left on the inside, that's like a powder coating, I'm leaving that on the inside. But I'm going to shrink it now along this edge. The problem I got with this panel is that it's perfectly straight and there's supposed to be a slight concave on it this way here. So I'm going to stretch it along, or shrink it along here to try to get this to curve, okay? By shrinking this here, it kind of turns the metal. And then what I'll do is I'll run this section here, I'll tap bead on it on the back side here to give it a bit of crown to it. And then I'll straighten it all up with the English wheel, right? So first thing I'll do now is just... Basically, you're coming out here, start from the middle, work my way out, and just stretch this, or shrink this, sorry.
If you look down that now, you can see there's a curvature of that there. So now the next thing I'll do is I'll tap all this here and try to get a bit of a high spot here so that I can English wheel it out here. Because the problem I got in English wheel in here, but this section here will remain low. So I gotta bring this up as well. So I gotta have this here a little bit of a curve in this section right here. All I'm gonna do is hammer into the top of the bench. Anytime you hammer uh, a piece of metal between another uh, piece of metal, you stretch where you hit with the hammer, and by stretching it, the metal has to go somewhere. No matter what you're doing, it has to rise up, and that's what that's how you get metal is stretched. Sometimes when it's uh, when you hammer too much, it stretches. So I got that done there now. I'm just going to run that through the English wheel and just smooth it all out and get a nice little crown on it. <coughs> all I got done is I got a mild crown on this here. So uh, I'm just going to snug it up a bit. I'm just going to just wheel this through it. Take my dime. Just going to get a slight crown out. Get it to rise up in the middle more. In the outer edges. About up here too much because I'll end up cutting this off somewhere in here anyway. There we go, nice little crown on that. I don't know if you can see it there, but this crown across that has got a bit of curvature there. So, one more test fit that now. And that's just the first fit. And you can see now it's got to be rolled in a bit more on the back than on the front. The front seems to be nice, you can almost look at the shadow here, and you can see that it's wider back here than it is up here. I like to have that consistent. So i got to go over on the pipe anvil now and put a bit of more, more of a curvature in the bottom of that. That's a lot better. I got a dolly in a bit here and I'll flat right along here. So I should be able to have it in. I'll mark it down here where it's actually touching and then I'll flatten it out a bit on this end here over on the bench. Now by looking at the panel, look, this goes up straight but it got sort of a kink in it here. This is where it's touching. I'm just going to flatten this end out here because it seems like it, as it goes back through here it gets better. So it's more or less just this last end section that got to be tweaked. So I'll just use the old anvil on that and just tweak it in there. Now I tweaked it a bit more over in the vise, as you've seen, and then I come over here and I went and put a pair of vise grips on it. I got a nice clean uh, lip there, and I'm happy with that. So I went ahead then, I marked it in here, because I want to notch the bottom of it. Down here I marked the bottom of it where it overlaps, because I have this panel overlapped onto this one for now. And I marked it right here, so I'll know where the spot welds would end, okay? So I'll take that off now and I'll go over, I'm going to trim off this back side here on the bottom. 
so that the, the whole entire bottom section overlaps and then when it comes into the roll section that's where I'll actually start doing the cotton butt too and uh, it'll actually overlap on, on the upper side but I want to I want to raise it up in the back so that because uh, right now it's overlapped and it's down because of this panel here is on top of it so I'm going to trim it up so that it goes up flush to that panel and this is the back part the back part this was overlapped here I'm just going to come in here and cut this in along here and notch it here so this here then will lay flat on the bottom side and that way I'll have a spot then for the actual butt weld and then I can actually cut the feet up here or uh, do the cotton butt up here and over here I got that mark so now I know I don't need to put no spot welds back here because the flange ends here there I got the end trimmed off it there now and if you look closely here you will see that that's actual butt welded right along here I wouldn't say butt welded but it's butted up against this panel here and all I'll do now is I'll start here and I'll do the cotton butt up along here and along here to weld that on but down here now this here is flush the way this is here okay I got it done and all I'll do now is I'll just go back and I'll spot weld the put holes in this here for the spot welder. Now I don't know if you can really see it there, but if you look at this here now, this got a slight curvature. What I'm saying curvature, like that's over exaggerating it. From here coming right on down through here, okay? It's lower here than it is here, so it's got a slight curvature to it. And that's the way these cars were. Um, so all the work that I did, I done so I can actually get that a little bit curved. I found that if it goes too flat from here to here, it doesn't look right. So, if you look here, you can actually see it here. You know, I can actually rock the uh, rock that back and forth, so it's higher here, so it'll give you a nice flow to it. See, and that's the way that is. And if you look across it this way, it's the same thing. See, it rocks back and forth on this here. So there is a crown at entire panel. With the work that I done with it. So all that is a hole punch crimper. I never used a crimper. A lot of people have used them over the years. Um, I had one of these hole punches that was two different size holes. And I can't seem to find it. All I can find is a hole punch and a crimper. And I very rarely use that crimper, okay? These are what comes out of them. Just punches little round holes. Very nice, even, perfect size for a spot weld. I got a drill bit here. The end is flattened off on it. And uh, it's a quarter bit, 5 16 Basically the same size as the spot weld holes. Because up here, I got paint where I painted this panel earlier. And what I got to do is everywhere I'm going to weld it, I'm about to clean the paint off. So this is all I'll use.
there it is all welded in place uh, uh spot welded in on the bottom side there went along there grind it all off and don't any touch-ups need to be and then come back and grind it up here did anybody notice the mistake that i made okay um i talk about controlling my heat and welding it up spot weld spot weld spot weld spot weld did i do that here no okay i got ahead of myself here and I want to show you something. Uh, yeah, whatever. I just got ahead of myself, and now I'm going to show you something. That's the way I should word this. Uh, I hear a lot of guys talking about the, the metal tucking in and stuff like that. This is what happened here. I blew a bunch of heat into this that time. All right, and then I turned around, and then I tried cooling it right fast. What it was it was way too much heat in there, and this is what happens. Okay, that tuck effect goes on there. Okay, going down through there. All this here drew in on me because that whole section here was heated up suddenly. Then I cooled it suddenly and then it all went. If I had to go back, I had to do some touch-ups on it and touch it, touch it, touch it. And you know, that type of thing. Come up there, do once every inch or so, cool it off. One every inch or so, cool it off. I, I got ahead of myself. Want to hurry up, get it done, that kind of thing. We all do it. And I ended up running a bead up through here and then a bead up through here. And then I grinded it all off. I cooled it off very quick, figured I'd save it. And what ended up happening, it ended up talking to me. All right. And what I mean by talking is that right where I welded it, there's a space probably about this wide going right up through the whole panel there now. That's got probably about like a sixteenth of an inch drop in it. It's not flat anymore. Okay. You can actually see it there when it holds that edge on it. And you look down through it, you can actually see the spot there. Right, the shadow. Uh, now there's this here. I got to cut all this here Anyway, and do a cutting bolt on this here when I put the new panel on her and that'll be okay there I'll dolly that out before I does it. I'll work it. I'm lucky I can get on the back side of it to work it out Still even when I get on the back side of it It's still not an easy thing because you got to realize this distance here from here to here now. is longer. Okay um, It's very hard like this here almost got to be shrank in this area here um, Times like this fella that have asked about it what I usually do with this here, if I'm really meticulous about it, I'll cut it again. I'll go back and I'll do it over and start welding it up again, taking my time. It's very hard we're in a small area and you're doing a lot of welding. Rocker panels especially, you're welding a piece in a rocker and as well as a lot like this here. You're welding in a small area. It's not like I'm welding up here and then I'm coming welding down here. I'm just welding up, welding across, welding down. Then you wonder why it happens. That whole area is all gone hot on you, so it's going to pull on you. But anyway, we all make mistakes, we all have issues, and, uh, you know, even my metal work is not always perfect. Anyway, I'll dolly that up later when I need to, because i got to find out where the panel comes in, because down here is not bad, and down on here is only about from here up that is after doing on me, and depending on where my panel is to, and I cuts it off, what I'm going to end up doing with that, and I'll worry about that then. Now that i got that in place, i got to go up here, cut all this out of the way, and make another piece like this here, up there so I'm down here now sizing up everything got to be done this was repaired before you can see what's been done here problem I'm having is they grinded it off way too thin in amongst here and now this is all holes here all down here it's the same thing it's all holes down here but this is a crown panel I, you know I got to try to save it what I'm going to do here now I'm looking at sizing it up in here it's an overlap weld and it's really dropped low okay right here what I'm going to do is I need that curvature Okay, but everything around the outer edge of it got to be repaired. What I'm going to do, I'm going to cleave off this section here now, come in down along here, cut that off, and get that out of there all together. What I'm going to do is take that over on the bench, do all the repairs to it so that it overlaps up here and down along here, and that way I can come over here and do a nice cut and butt in the repair panel there, but retaining this piece here. This one's a little bit different. Uh, I haven't done a repair like this before. I've come across like stuff like this over the years before. Uh, you would say, okay, let's replace it, put another panel on it. But in the case of some cars, this one here, I do not have this replacement piece, okay? Um, if I had another panel here, I'd probably cut it off. But for the sake of the video, I'm going to repair this. Now, you would think, okay, cut this out, weld a piece in there, weld a piece in here, cut a piece and weld in there. No, nope. I'm going to get this here looking proper over on the bench. And uh, I'm just going to cleave this off, add a big section out of it here, big section out of it here. And do the cotton butt in through here, dolly it all up on the bench so all this is nice and smooth. So then I got one weld across here and one weld down through here. This weld down through here should be strong because it's on a rolled edge. This one up here, I just got to take my time with it. But I want to repair all this section here. 
all down here this is just a mess if you look at it the way it's all done the way they got it all done here and this is extremely thin down here i can actually pick that pick it out that's how thin it is so i'll come in here and i'll clean this off up here on the inside of the weld i'll come up here above the weld take all this with me cut all this off up here i was going to cut down through here but i got to replace this anyway and a new quarter panel comes here so i'm just going to come straight across there and cut that clean right off and take that whole corner out and repair it Some with sunglasses. Made in China, yes, bud. <laughs> you don't know what you're gonna find. Well, isn't this lovely? We can see the back side of it. Look. So now, you could probably sit down and someone's saying, well, well, Tony, why don't you just make a whole new piece to put in there? Fine, you can. But this here is going to be tricky to make, this rolled edge, okay? Um, yes, I'd be able to do it. It's going to take a lot of time to do it. I already have this piece here. I'm going to turn around and I'm going to add to it because not everybody got an English wheel. So what I'm going to do is go and I'm going to clean up this here now and see what we got. And I'm going to take it from there and start trimming pieces off it and adding pieces to it and get this piece so that it's a new panel. And I got this nice curved edge out. So I went and dug out a piece of steel. I have a bunch of these square uh, pieces of steel from uh, a collection of stuff that I got old lockers they're from. This, apparently these were the tops of the lockers or something. So um, what I got done here now is I'm laying this out to figure out how much I need. I had to turn around and build this section on the other side, which I had to extend it, which was this piece here that I had left over from the other piece. I was supposed to shape that, and that was supposed to go there, roughly about that far over. I went over on the car over here, and I measured this distance along here, and I come up with 18 inches. So the distance from here back to here would be 18 inches. That's how much I need. So I need that much length there, and then I need a couple inches up top, because where I cut this off, I want to do a bit of an overlap on it, and then for it to come down to here. Now I gotta have a bit of a roll on that, so I'll come a little bit past that, and I'll come a little bit past this here. Now it may seem to some to say, Tony, why don't you just go and make the whole piece again? The whole point of this video is I'm trying to show you that I'm gonna reuse something, okay? Sometimes you don't have it. This is gonna take a lot of hours to try to make this shape, okay? You're probably gonna make it, it's probably gonna go like this, or it's probably gonna make it, it's probably gonna go like this. So, you know, it may take a couple of tries to get it. We already have the basic shape here, okay? If you size things up and really look at this panel, okay? If you look at it, just concentrate up here. Just come straight across here, and then it rolls off this way. There's a very, very slight roll here, okay? 
Same with this end down here. This comes down here and it rolls off this way and there's a slight concave like this kind of like goes up a small bit of hill but that there seems easy enough that we can do. Uh, this one here is probably a bit more complicated because it's the way it's curved and it's got a roll lip on it. We're not going to worry about that one right now. We're going to worry about building the back side, this section over here and this section over here and then we'll build that after the fact, okay? So I'm going to set this up here now and I'm going to just blindly cut out a large section here. Because uh, I'm going to be cutting the center out of it here. I only need like an L shape. So I'm going to draw it up there and just figure out where I got to go. Because I want to come in across this here and then down this way, over here and down this way. So I'm going to draw it out on this here, figure out what it is so I don't have too much wastage. And uh, we'll go from there. So this is all I drew out on it. I got my length, my width, how wide it had to be here, how wide it had to be here. By cutting this piece out here, now I haven't got to worry about doing fancy rolls. I just got to roll this this way with a slight crown. I got to roll this way with a slight crown, okay? And then I'll just turn around and I'll cut this in through here. And that will weld on through here, up through here, and across here. I'm keeping this section here, see? So I'll go cut that out there now. I went ahead and I cut out the piece of steel. I cleaned off just these sections here because these are where the rolls got to be and where the joint's going to be at. Uh, one more thing I want to cover with this stuff here, okay? Now, right off the bat, you cut this off the car. The first thing you're gonna want to do, because you're looking at it and say, I'm gonna clean that up there now, and you cleave all this off down here, and you cleave this off here, and you cleave all this off here, and you cleave all this off here, and you're left with a little tiny piece of metal. Don't be at it, okay? This is your template. The one of the main things I got to look at is right here. <laughs> Drop that, Tony. One of the main things I had to look at right here is the straight edge, okay? That's where I cut it off the car, and I got to overlap that there, and that's where it's got to go. Now, if I take this panel and cut this off here, cut this off here, cut this off here, and all that type of stuff, where does that panel go, okay? You don't know where that panel goes. Like, that could be up too high, could be down too low, but you want it right here so it's parallel, so you can move it up and down this way here like this, right? So by leaving all this together here now, I'm going to turn around and make this piece fit this panel, uh, I'm going to put a couple of tack wheels on it. I'm not going to cut nothing out of it. Uh, I'm just going to get it all fitting where I'm happy with it. Because I'm going to do like a cotton bot type thing on it um, after the fact. But I want to get the panel, this one here, close to this here. So I'm going to go ahead now, set this up where I think this should be on this here, and clamp it on. So here's where I'm to. I got a couple of clamps put on this. In. It's overlapping. Just got to roll this way. Just got to roll this way. But here is the reason why... I left the panel, this piece of panel on here. Now there's still a little bit off. See this line here, this parallel line here. This is the line that I'm trying to line everything up on. This here edge to this edge here. So that way I know I still got a point to know that this is level for this curvature here, right? So all I'll do is I'll loose, loosen this up here and I'll tweak this a bit so the line's up here and then I can turn around and start marking it and figure out where everything's going. What I might end up doing, I might put a couple of clicos in this here so I can keep returning it back to this location again. And that way, I haven't got to worry about clamping it all the time. So, I'll set this up and put a couple of clicos in it, and we'll go from there. Here's all I went and did. So, I got them clicoed into place there. A lot of people have asked about these. They asked them there, okay? All it is, these are 1 8 clicos. Um, this is how it's spelt. A lot of people wonder how it's spelt. You drill a 1 8 hole, okay? And it's got that little end on it like that, and you push it through, and it goes narrow. And it'll fit through the hole, and when the hole's back, it locks itself in place, right? So that's all how it works. Just take that like that, and then I'll let go, and I push down, let go of it, and it holds the metal in place like that. And that's what it looks like on the back side, okay? Like there. So that's all there is to them. Now, this is what I got done. I got it clamped in place here, and that's my locations. Now, when you flip it over, you look here. You will see that I got this parallel to this here now. It's close enough to it anyway. So it's pretty close. So now that I got that figured out, what I can work on now is I'm going to work on rolling these edges. I'm going to roll this edge here and shape it. And I'm going to roll this edge here and shape it. That's all I'm going to work on. This here is going to stay flat for now. I may put a bit of a crown on it, a small bit of crown later on. Um, but right now I'm going to leave it like it is. So... Uh, what I'll end up doing here now is I'll take this piece off, I'll go over in the pipe anvil over here, and I'll turn around and I'll bend that uh, over in the pipe anvil and round this out here, and then I'll just come back over and I'll just put a slight shape to it as need be.
So I clamped it back in place, and I got the roll put on here, and I, I played with this here. I had it rolled off this way first, and then I turned it a small bit, but tweaked it in the uh, pipe anvil, just so it didn't have a straight edge going this way on it. So now what I got to do is I got to roll this edge right here, and I'm just going to use this. I'm going to lay it on, and I'm going to start tapping this around here, and try to get a bit of a crown to this section of it here. So this here got a bit of a rat roll to it going this way. Okay, it's starting to come around there. You can see there's a bit of a roll on it. It's getting close to it. Here, but the problem I'm having here now is I've got to roll a lot on this here. So I want to stretch this area in here first. Uh, you can sit down and shrink this if you want to. Uh, I always find it's a lot easier stretching metal than it is to shrink it. And then I'll dolly it back and then it'll, it'll uh, force itself off of here. All I'm going to do is the old pipe trick. Take the hammer, hammer down into it. Uh, stretch this area here. Stretch this along here. And then I'll turn around and I'll dolly it on this here. And see what it's like. So as you can see, that worked out pretty good. I got that there now fitting nice along down, down along there. Okay, all I did is I stretched this section down through here, and then I hammered it back, and I put a roll back on it. Right? So I put a bit of a crown on it, and I took the crown out of it. And by doing so, it actually stretched the metal going this way here. So I got that done there now. What I'll do now is I'll do the whole thing again. I'll do the same process down here. I'll roll this one off here. This one here, I just got to roll the edge on it because I know it's for a fact this goes straight off here. But it tips down underneath the bottom of the car here. So I'll do the same thing here as what I did here. And I'll show you what I come up with. So here we go. Same process as what I've done over here. I did over here. I just hammered and dotted it. Ran it through the um, pipe anvil. Crowned it up along here. Knocked it over on this here. Crowned it up on this with the ball peen. Okay. And then I turn around and flatten it out on top of that there. And of course, like I said, I did roll on it. I'm very happy with how this fits here now, okay? Up along here to hold on there. So what I'm going to do now before it goes any further, I'm going to make this part of this, okay? Uh, make one piece too. Not going to worry about this down here yet. I still got to trim this off down here. I still got to trim this off here. And I want to shape all this here as well. So that all that fits nice. But I want to get it permanently part of all this here. So I'm going to tack weld this on along here now. And I'm going to start doing the cotton bud along here. Um, I think I'm just going to weld it in along here. Because this is going to want to pull out here, come out this way when I start cutting it. So if I weld it on here, it's going to fight itself coming out to this edge. So all I'm going to do is tack weld it in along here so I can get the clicos out of the way. And then I'll do a cotton butt in along here. And then I'll start working my way from this corner, working my way out along here.
there you see me doing the cotton balls. I'm pleased with that. I'll hammer that a bit more now and it gets it all straightened away. I'm going to go up there now. i got to change the blade and the grinder. So I'm going to go up there now, change the blade, and I'll go ahead and I'll do the same thing up here as what I did down here and get all that there uh, tack welded together. So I went ahead, done the same thing down here, cut it, tack welded, trimmed it, got everything removed from the inside now. So that's all I got left here now. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back now and I'm going to give, grind all the heads off of this off nice and flush and everything. And I'm going to hammer and dolly this here so it's got a nice flow and everything to it going down along here before it does anything else. So let's get that done. So I went and grinded it all up, so now that I got a flat, now I can rub my hand over it this way here and I can find out. Up down through here, I find it's still a bit high here and it's a bit low down through here. So what I'll do is I'll dolly all it up. All I got done is I got my old dolly clamped into the vise here and I'm going to lay it over that. I'm going to hammer on either side of the high spots, put the low spot here and try to bring the low spot up. Very pleased with that. Where well, that goes in along there now, and down along there. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead now and I'm gonna weld all this up and finish this much off before I start on this section here. And I'll have all that done, and that'll be all one piece then. So get that welded up. So there it is, all welded up. It's a little bit warm from the last pass. I'm gonna go ahead now and I'm gonna take the 24 brick grinding disc and I'm gonna grind all this down. Okay. Uh, never mentioned it yet. Uh, this is 18 gauge metal. Uh, it's a different color than the white stuff that I use. Uh, it's the same stuff though. It's stuff that I got maybe six years ago. All the stuff I got, I still got some left from it. So I'm, I still got stuff around, I can tell you that. And uh, so I'm going to go ahead now, grind all this up, finish that off there before I move on to this here. So there you have it. I got that welded in along there. We're all grinded off. I'm very pleased with that. Uh, how does all done? You see me touching up a few spots again, going back. I never bothered to weld the inside yet. I'll do that later. I just trimmed it all up and grind off so I can dolly it and whatnot. Now, next thing I want to do is that when I looks down across this here is extremely flat, okay? It's flat in this here, area here. Uh, I was always looking at the car and there's a little bit of a crown here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over the English wheel out and work this area here and just try to crown this section up a bit. All I'm looking to do... Is it just to raise this section up in here just a little bit? So I'll work in that area that it wants to bring up. And I'll, and, uh, I'll just crown that a small bit. Go way out from that. There we go. It's nice there now. I like the way that is. So I'm pleased with that. It's got a nice crown on it now. 
going across there. Hard to see, there's one there at all. And it's nice and stiff and everything up along here. All it does are raise up the section here, just running through the wheel a few different ways. Because this was curved this way here, I, I kept running it diagonally this way here instead of running it straight across this way or this way here. I ran it diagonally because of this shape. So it'll actually crown it this way here. So I got that done. Now what I'm going to do is over here, if you remember, see, I still got this piece here. This is cut right along the edge. This is the flat part of the car here. Okay. What I'm going to do is this continues on right along here. I'm going to put a straight line. And I'm going to put a slight bend on this here, going up through here and the straight line so I can test fit this on the car and see where I'm to. And then I'm going to start trimming off the top of it, put a couple of clicos in it, get it all fitting where I'm happy with it, and uh, start working on it. And then when I'm happy with how it fits up here, then I'll turn around and I'll start working on this section here. Now I know this section here got to be folded up this way here. I don't want to go put a straight edge on it because I think that it's going to... Uh, look too straight for me so I'm going to uh, bend it over by hand use the hammer or dolly and uh, just slowly work work it up this way first test fit okay now it's eh, okay the very bottom down here I got to do some trimming down here so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get a trimming because if you look it sticks out too far so I can get this here coming closer to the body I'll trim the bottom off and just slowly start moving in until I got that deer lined up so that touches that deer and then we'll go from there so I got it trimmed up I got to fit a lot better down there now and what I did is I went in on the back side here you can look in through here and you can see how low it was and I got it marked along here now uh, to see how low it is because this here sticks out way too much because this whole panel crowns. There's no flat sections on this panel. This actually arcs this way here. So I got to find out the point right here now where I cross over. And then I got to put a bit of an arch on this here so I can get this to lay flat in here. But it's still got to go in another, you know, this distance here for sure. So I'm going to take it off, trim it off here now and uh, go from there. There's the mark on the inside. So I'll just come up about to here, three quarters of an inch. And I'll just lift that right off. So I got to clamp back on again, and I'm pleased we're through there now. Down here, I actually lined up the cuts, okay? That we're still in this piece. Again, one of the reasons why I wanted to leave that there. I got reference points just from where I chopped it off that I can line stuff up. Down on the bottom side was the same way. That's how I got the panel worse, too. Now, it needs some work along here, and in here, this sticks out too far, but down here is pretty good. So what I'm going to do here first is uh, this is where the panel is going to go. I'm going to take two clicos now and put them over here where the panel is nice and flat. So that way I can keep returning it back to the same place every single time. So i got two locations up here to clico it on. And I also found one down here in the corner to put another clico in it. So now i got a spot that I can take that and put that back in place. Now before I do anything else, what I'm going to do is I'm going to rework this section up here. And get this piece fitting nice against the body panel here. And get the nice gap in along here so this all fits nice. So I've had to rework in the corner here a bit and got to rework this angle here. I ended up, you can actually see where the bend was originally. We're back here. I've had to roll it back a bit. So i got to fit nicer there now. And I had to remove this uh, location here, twist it a small bit because it wasn't lining up nice down here on the bottom side for me. And I just used voice grips down there. I was putting clicos in there, but it was drawing it in too far. So i got to leave that alone. Uh, what I'm going to do here now is, now I'm happy with that there, where that's fitting. I'm going to turn around and start making this piece here. So this one here now, uh, the problem with this one is here is this is on an angle. Like if you look at it, it's not straight, okay? So what I got to do now is I got to cut a piece out that'll fit there just roughly over the top of that there to start with, okay? I got to put a roll edge on this edge here. But the problem you got here is making a piece for this here. You could probably make a template, okay? It would probably be easier to do it with a template, uh, but I don't use templates for when I don't like this stuff. The problem you're going to have is this piece is going to be shaped like a U, okay? It's not going to be a flat piece of steel. So the distance from here to here, uh, if you come straight across here, it'll fade out here. So I got to have a piece that's wide enough to fit this whole piece here to start off with, so that I can start trimming it to fit. So I'm going to get a piece now to start with. 
So I got this piece cut out here, okay? It's way too wide, it's way too long. I'm hoping, anyway. So, uh, like, you know, I'd say if I had to make a template here, it'd be a lot easier. <laughs> but I'm going to do it the way I always do it. Uh, what you're going to do here now, a lot of times people start cutting this out. I'm still not going to cut this out. This is my edge here, okay? This is my rolled edge. This was cut right in the middle of the rolled edge through here. So I want to have reference point from here out to wherever I go to here to be left. I'm going to set this all up. And all I'm going to do now is I'm going to fit this into this. Put a bit of a roll in it so that it fits on the right angle going this way, okay? And I'm going to roll it and fit it, and then I'm going to start sizing up where to trim it. I'm going to mark this inside here, so that way I can see where the roll is to, and I'll give myself probably an inch out past that. And I'll come in to do about here somewhere, so I'll get a piece shaped to go to that. All I did is I notched up the corner here so that it actually gave me a bit of room here. Because see the way this come down on an angle? When this came straight down, I moved it over. I want this here to be able to line up with this, so I cut a notch out of the corner. I'll show you in a minute. And then I just clamped it in place, and now I marked it along there now i'm going to cut the piece out i know it's got to be at least this wide all the way around okay and up here i'm going to need about an inch so now that i got a reference line i'll go from there there's the reference line that i marked okay there's a little notch that i cut i had to have this on an angle this way here for it to line up because this way here i was leaving a big gap on the end which is no big deal but all it does is cut that in there and follow that to be parallel to this here okay so now i come down here and i measure it up here that was about an inch and a half there, so an inch and three quarter. And this inch and three quarter, I'm gonna cut that off there, that's the line there. And then I give myself an inch up here, I'm gonna cut that off there, so I'll get this piece cut out now. So there it is cut out you can see the shape that it is i'll go ahead now and get all this cleaned up okay i got them all cleaned off both sides and i went ahead and clamped it in place again and i remarked it okay then i flipped it over here and you can see it fits nice over here okay fits nice up along there i'm going to trim off these ends here now okay i'm going to trim two of them off square them off there then over here on this side here okay now, I got left an inch here, and I got an inch left here, and one thing I've noticed over the years is when it comes to rolling an edge, especially on a curved edge like this here, um, I could probably bend that on a 90 and then shrink it, okay? That was probably what you'd end up doing with it. But uh, we're not going to use any tools like that on this here. What I'm going to do is, I, I know for a fact that about a quarter of an inch, I can actually manipulate a quarter of an inch lip, okay, all the way around there, that I can actually roll it and get this shape to go like this here. I only need a quarter of an inch on the roll, okay? Right here, this is left long. I'm planning on cutting that off about a quarter of an inch off there. So all I'm going to do there now is I'm going to mark this here, along here, a quarter of an inch, and I'm going to trim that off there, trim off my things, and then I'm going to start rolling this edge here. Okay, I got that trimmed off. And I'm left with just this quarter inch, a little bit wider, going along here, okay? What I'm going to do now is you can bend this lip with a, uh, a pair of pliers, if you want to do it that way. I'm going to use the vise. So uh, what I'm going to do, now that'll straighten this out, but that's fine, because I'm, I'm going to bend this back again anyway. I'm probably going to have to stretch a bit of this section here in order to get it to go right. But I'm just going to bend this here now on a 45 degree angle all along here. and have that there so then I can start shaping the panel again.
So I got that lip rolled over. I'll still work that some more, but you can see what I got down here. Okay, going along here. Now when I fit it in place, you can see that it's still got to be, it's it got to be round out. I'll just bend that by hand now to fit that in place, and I'll clamp that back there. As you can see, leaving this rusty piece here, uh, you can actually use it for a guideline, okay? I'm not going to remove this until the last minute, until I know that this is fitting, it's fitting on the car. I'll overlap this, put a couple of tacks on it, and do all that type of stuff. And you'll find that, like, leaving that piece there, it helps for reference. If I had to blindly cut that off, then I'd be chasing after this here, trying to find out where this fits to. Is this too high, is this too low, or whatnot? But by leaving this here, I can use this as a reference now. To go along there see now on this side here it seems to be a bit tight and everything I'm gonna crown this up a bit I'm gonna take it over on this here and put a little slight crown roll off the edge of this here so I can get this here fitting better that way but you can see the nice lip that I got on it there now and I'll work this lip a bit more as well but I'll get that done now As you can see, that fits a lot nicer now. It's got a nice roll going down over it. Right? And I flatten that edge. Right? So all I'm going to do here now, I'm still not going to cut this out in here. I'll leave it at just like it is. Because I want to keep this for the alignment of this here. So I can use that for the alignment. I'm going to tack well that piece onto it. In a couple of spots. Just tack it on a few spots along here. And then go over and test fit it on the car. There I got it fitting in place, I went and tack welded on a few places, and when I fit it in place and I push in on it, it's good here, but down here it rolls in more. So this here don't go straight like this here, it's got a more of a gradual roll on it, and then the gradual roll fades out, and then it starts to get sharper up here. Like it's not a real sharp end either, right? So I'm, I'm happy with that, I can work that after the fact, I can roll that in there to fit that better. But uh, I'm pretty pleased with that there, the way that goes on there, so... What I'm going to do now is uh, I'm going to play with this a bit more. And uh, the problem with this is this got to go in this way a small bit more when I cut it to fit because up here i got a bit of an overlap. So I'm going to uh, reposition this now and uh, get ready for the, the cotton bot.
So here's what I got done. Uh, I cut it off. Before I cut it off, I marked it with a marker along this edge here. And you'll see the re you can see the reason why I did this. I wanted to move the entire panel this way. So by marking it, what I did then is I moved the metal down just a tad bit from where I already marked. Okay? And that lined up this edge here. So this here would come together nice. All right. And then what I did then is I rolled this edge off here so it wasn't so sharp. Okay. Up here it's pretty sharp. You can see this, right? That's a pretty abrupt one. But as it goes down, it flows away. See? Like that? That's the way I want to have it. So I'm going to go over and test fit this now. And there it is now put in place. I'm pleased with that now. There's a gradual flow into that there. And up along here when I push in on that. It's all fitting good. It's fitting good down along here as well. i got to do some work here. probably got to end up cutting this off anyway. And a lot of this has got to be cut off. And same one up through here because you can see where the original panel, the new panel is coming down through. I only have to save a small section of this. But I'm happy with that to the point now that I'm going to go over on the bench and I'm going to do the cotton bud on this here now and get that piece installed and get that all dressed.
was a lot of work. Bit of fighting. Right? Over here I had to bring this in. I had to close this up to change the angle on this here. This here was coming too much of a point here. And what I was doing, I was tapping them in. And when I'm tapping them in, the, the gap would close up. And I'd cut through it again, tap it in some more. The gap would close up and I'd cut through it some more. That's how I was moving that inboard, right? But uh, I got it there now where I'm happy with it. I got a spot welded on and I grinded it off so I can shape it. I'm going to take this now and I'm going to trim this off up across here. And I'm going to go over and do an test fit on that. Well, I'm pleased with that. I had to work the upper corner here a bit more, but you push in on that there. That fits nice, like so. And that's all overlapped down through here now. So I'll scribe all that later. And I'll do the, the cut to fit down here. And then I'll come up here and probably do a cut to fit to here. And then do an overlap here. That way I got something to hang it off of. I can position it all. I haven't got to worry about trying to float it in there and clamp stuff on and whatnot. I'll still be able to use these here. So I'm going to take this off now and go over and uh, weld all this up. Uh, same process as before, weld an inch, cool, weld an inch, you know, skip an inch, weld an inch, skip an inch, that type of thing. So I'm going to go ahead, get that all banged out, get that all grinded up, and finish this panel off all together. There you have it. Welded it all up, grinded it all up, touched up a few welds, welded it all up again and grinded it up. So, this is like on the inside. Here's the original piece that I started with. I've ever replaced all the weak stuff all the way around it now. And I got a nice solid... 18 gauge panel now that I can install. I'm going to go ahead now, strip all this off here, weld up a couple of holes because I need to keep that one and that one, but I'll weld up any other things down that don't need to be these two here. And uh, I'll go over and I'll prep the car so I can start um, fitting this panel under and scribing where it's got to go. There it is, all grinded up. Got the panel all cleaned up, up here as well. And I got to, all I got to do is just push in on that small bit there for to get it to fit. But it fits really nice down along there, down along the bottom. Now I got to do some work down on the bottom side there. So I'm not too concerned about that. Because I got to work on that there to bring up to the to skirt later on. So I'll rework that then. But the main thing is I'll get all this st structure done here. Uh, what I'm going to do here now is I'm going to run a marker along here. Mark all this here. And then I'm going to take it off, color it in, put it back on. And scribe a line along here so I can actually see it. What's got to happen here now is this panel is here now. Uh, when this panel goes on, it's got to go this way, okay? It's got to, I got to move it back in order for all this here to line up. So I got it in my head. I think I'm going to do a cut the feet right here and down through here, okay? Uh, might leave part of the bottom down alone down here and then get a small cutting wheel and then just slowly do the cutting butt on it down, down, down there. But I need to get this corner done because it's going to be very hard to get a grinder in there. Uh, the way that is there now I can come down here and I can cut into there and I can come up through there with the panel off See and I can trim that up so I can get that there to fit nice So then I can move the panel back clamp it on and then I can start welding in this corner This is where I'll start I'll start welding here and working my way back to this because if you started up on this end here and came forward You got a lot of overlap here. You can see the thickness of the metal there, right? So this got to go back a fair bit and that here them holes here will not line up no more So I'll get this all marked up now so I went ahead and I done the marker trick on it and then I scribed it. You can see plain as day where that edge is to, okay? Coming along here. Now this one here, okay, this will be on this side of it. It won't be right on the cutting line. So I'm gonna cut just shy of this one here. So when I slide it forward, it'll uh, it'll have a nice tight fit down through the bottom side down here. So I'm going to go and come in here now and I'm gonna trim back this here to about here somewhere and then cut it off. And then do this corner, get this cut down like this way here, come down so far. I might do the whole thing yet, I don't know, because it brings up down there. And then I can work it all the way around. It's going to be hard to cut this curve uh, down here to uh, fit. Like, usually I do straight panels, but because the way this is shaped, I want to take it in the roll. So that way it's uh, less work to be involved in trying to repair it, right? Or fill it after the fact, because you're inside a rolled edge, right? So I'm going to go ahead now, I'll trim this off here, and trim this down through here. I'll take my time, clean it all off, and I'll probably just cut it back so far, and then I'll probably shape it with the grinder or the die grinder or something to bring it in tighter. So, anyway, get that done. So, I got it all trimmed up, and you can see how I trimmed it up. You can see the line there, or I cut it back to. And this side here, you can see the line, and you see how much I left there. Now, I'm going to be able to take a zip blade down through there. Uh, I'm going to take a small zip blade on the grinder, the air grinder, and uh, tidy that up. 
that it needs to fit and whatnot. But I got that set up that way and it's still going to be able to clamp on back here. So I went ahead and cleaned up all the things and painted in here. There's going to be some work done in here later, wheel wells and stuff like that. I'm going to address that later. I want to get the outside of the body solid and my plan is quite possibly to put this on a rotisserie so I can do the bottom because there's a lot of work that they, they really cut corners on the bottom and I don't want to be lying on my back to repair it. I just assume I had the car on the side to do it. So I'm here now and I got to put up in place and I got one cleat I'll put back here and I want to leave this one out because I want this here to be able to bow out because I'm trying to line this up in here and I'm going to push that in underneath that there. It's the worst thing about butt well and stuff is getting everything to line up. So I want that there to fit in there. It still overlaps a bit in there but I got to tap it back in the corner and make sure she's good down there. What I'm going to do is work with my thumbs too. I'm going to put a tack weld and I put a couple of tacks down the bottom side there so it doesn't move forward. Uh, any more than that and then I'll start working my way down around and out to there and going back through there You can see the way that there is lifted up off the panel there because I'm pushing the panel backwards So it's wanting to come out here see so I'll get that there welded in there now
There I got it all tack welded in place. And uh, you can see me in there. I had it was a bit trouble trying to get this in this section here, trying to get this here to fit in, so it was nice and flush going through it. And then I went on and I, and I continued on over there. I ended up having to cut that entire piece out of it because this section of the panel is so strong it won't go in. I had to push this past the panel in order to get this section here to go in. Then I just start pulling the panel out as I was going along to get it to fit nicer. And then <clears throat> that's one thing that you probably notice me doing. Like you're not kind of pushing here. If I can pull in from up here, push it all the way in to get this to fit here, I will. I don't worry about this here fitting good out here until I get out to it, okay? Down through here, you saw me making cuts with the little ear grinder. This is all I do with these sometimes. I put leftover wheels on this ear grinder. I don't go cracked with them, okay? Uh, there's no guard or nothing on that, so. But I just take my time and I zip through in there. It, a smaller wheel uh, is easier to cut a curved edge than it is a larger wheel. And that big old grinder is a bit clumsy to get in there. You probably get in there with a reciprocating saw as well. That will be a dandy little tool, little zip blade. Just cut down through there. You do a nicer job on it. But this is all I got. We're always talking about doing it with what you have lying around too, right? So I got this all tack welded in. The bottom side I got welded up down and now. I'm just going to do the regular thing that I usually does for it. Weld an inch, skip an inch, weld an inch, skip an inch. And I'm going to get all that welded up there now. So there you have it. I've uh, forgot to show you where I spot welds a few spots again. I had to dolly it up along here. I had to weld up a few spots again down through here and then regrind it all up again. But it's, it's the same process. I've done it numerous times before. But you can see the way it flows very nice underneath the bottom of the car. Going closer, you can actually see the flow. It rolls in around here. Okay. It's nice and smooth down through here now. It's got a contour going that flows this way through the car. It looks good this way, blows this way, okay? I have a lot of access back here, and some of you are wondering why did you do this, so much of it. The wheel well is about here somewhere, okay? The new quarter panel when I put it on is only going to come to here, and it needs this lower section here, so I just wanted to build it big enough. It's a lot easier to cut something off it and have it too big than it is to have it too short and have to weld something else on down here, right? So that's the reason why I left that as long as I did, okay? Uh, there's been a lot of work on this one. Uh, it was a fair bit to cover on this one, so I think I'm going to leave this one here. Uh, but just going over a few things on it again. Uh, you can see what we went through with these pieces, okay? Some of this stuff was brutal, okay? This is what you're up against. So, uh, you know, someone got carried away with the grinding part of it and made it way too thin. You could have turned around and tried to patch this up. There's overlap panels here. You can see the overlap on the panel. That was the overlap that was on it. You can see how bad that was. Okay. So, you know, you, you turn around and uh, you can sit down and start trying to patch it all up, but you're going to be a nightmare. I find large sections like this, it's better to cut a large section out of it, take it over where you can work on it, make the whole piece again, and then re-weld it in again. You know, it's, I'm just using basic tools here, nothing fancy. It looks like it's ran through the English wheel as a, as a full homemade piece, but it's not. It's made up of... Um, you know scrap steel and part of the existing car you know you got to think outside the box sometimes when it comes to this stuff right the if you had to buy an aftermarket panel for this uh the ones that i'm familiar with i haven't found any because i don't think you can get a full quarter for these cars uh you can only get two lower sections and it only comes to about here somewhere okay the lower section do it doesn't go up as high as this do and it's a bit of a nuisance and this shape here doesn't look always the best at times right that's the reason why I, I opt to go this way than it was the actual wait for a panel. And besides that, all the bottom of this is custom made anyway, so it was a waste of time, right? But, uh, yeah. Anyway, I'm going to leave this one here. I hope the tips were good. And until next time.